Hey, what's up guys? My name is Tom Spark. Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to part two of the VPN Noob to VPN Master course. Hey guys, before we start this part of the course, if you wanna help support the course, go ahead and visit my website, vpntierless.com. If you wanna check out one of my favorite products that's mentioned in this course, and you click on these links like these, you will help support the channel by giving me a small cutback. Or if you go into the tier list itself and click on one of the VPNs in the tier list, it will help me receive a small cutback as well. And it will help me continue to make videos on VPNs and other products just like these. Anyways, guys, thanks for checking out the course and let's go ahead and get into it. In this video, we're going to discuss why use a VPN in the first place. Now, VPNs primarily came about after Snowden revealed how much mass surveillance there is around the world. Before this time, other things like antivirus and password managers were more common, I would say. But there were also other things like IP anonymizers, uh, things like proxies or torrent tools, stuff like PureBlock, which are used. But around 2012 to 2013, VPNs really started to take off and become more commonly used as an internet tool. It was around this time that people started to realize how many devices we use on a day-to-day -day basis that are connected to the internet. And what that could mean uh, as a kind of indication of what is happening to our privacy. But since this time, VPNs themselves have really involved and the reason people use VPNs can really vary. So today we are going to examine some of the top reasons that people use VPNs. So if you could decide that if you need one or not. So guys, probably the number one reason people start using VPNs in the first place is because they want to torrent stuff. Now, when you download content, whether movies, TV shows, music, or anything like that via P2P protocol or peer-to-peer, -peer, your IP address is actually public knowledge. So one of the most common reasons people use VPN is to hide their IP while torrenting. So that way you're not getting emails from your internet service provider threatening that they might cancel your service. This is very common. Kind of the moment people start looking for VPNs as a tool to hide their IP while torrenting. So a little more detail on that, the way that it happens is you could download a file and then everyone else who is downloading the file is in what is called a BitTorrent swarm. Now copyright troll companies or just copyright protection companies if you want to call them that, they will look inside these um, kind of swarms or people downloading this file. They will log all the IPs and then they will send these IPs to internet service providers telling them that one of their users or customers was downloading content that was copyright protected and this is when you will get the threat from your internet service provider. Now when you're using a VPN of course you can hide your IP while downloading this content so your IP never gets picked up by copyright companies. It's an anonymous shared IP that has no connection to you whatsoever. And like I said, this is one of the most common reasons that people start using VPN providers is because they kind of get scared into it in some ways uh, because they got that threatening email. Now, one concern that people have while using VPN, I've seen people talk about it and it seems kind of a common complaint for people who are new to VPN is that they're worried that the VPN will give up logs on them to copyright protection companies because they're downloading um, some kind of content. Honestly guys, this isn't really that big of a worry because I've never really even seen it happen. It's just not worth it for the VPN company or companies to go after the VPN company just because someone downloaded some files. So most VPNs have some kind of DMCA policy, but since most good VPN providers don't collect logs, they don't really ever interact, I don't think that much. Um, with these companies to have much stuff to give them in the first place. So it's not a big worry. The second most common reason that people use VPN providers is to unblock geo restrictions. What are geo restrictions you might ask? Well, the internet of course is a worldwide phenomenon and using it also means that there are restrictions worldwide based on your region or wherever your IP is. Now it doesn't even have to be in terms of global, it could be within a country. So let's say you're within the United States of America and you wanna watch basketball or football. Sometimes you can't watch certain games um, at certain times due to where you are in the United States. This is known as sport blackouts and some people exclusively use VPNs to trick websites or services that black out areas in order to watch the sport events they want when they want to. It's also extremely common to use VPNs to unblock restrictions to services like BBC iPlayer, Hulu, Prime Video, and yes, of course, Netflix. You can use a VPN to watch different content on the Japanese version of Netflix than you can on the United States version of Netflix and vice versa. 
Every area of Netflix around the world sort of does have different content, although the USA version definitely has the most content, so a lot of cases people will use the VPN to access the USA version of Netflix so they could watch the most shows. Now, unblocking jurisdictions is extremely useful, and it's become one of the main reasons that people use VPNs around the world. But there are also cases of people using VPNs to unblock jurisdictions for stuff like game betas, locked to specific regions like Korea. I've seen that with a lot of MMORPGs, and there's even some websites that are locked to specific regions as well. And even some countries have restrictions on certain states for stuff like gambling and stuff like that, which in some cases I've seen people use VPN to bypass those restrictions. Now, as you might know, in China, most every single social website is blocked. So theoretically, you could use a VPN to look at or unblock some of these websites. Although this is easier said than done since China has blocked most VPNs through strict firewall settings um, with techniques like deep packet inspection. But a lot of people do use VPNs around the world to unlock websites in certain regions that are less strict than the Chinese firewall. But no matter your use case, VPNs are definitely a valid tool alone for just geo restrictions and unblocking them since they don't really seem to be going away anytime soon. In fact, since 2016, I've noticed that geo restrictions have only gotten more strict with more major websites enforcing them and especially Netflix trying to block VPN users themselves for using this method. So not all VPNs will work from blocking geo restrictions, but thankfully I will touch on which ones are the best in the streaming um, kind of compatibility section that I'm going to be talking about later on in the review process. The third most popular reason people use VPN providers is for privacy and security. Now, in some ways, this could be switched to the number one reason because a lot of people simply use VPNs for this reason. And why is that? Well, VPNs provide privacy from your ISP since it encrypts your traffic and they can't monitor what you're doing, see your browsing history and stuff like this. VPNs also provide you with an anonymous IP, so websites can't log your IP or trace where you are in the real world. VPNs are often used in global situations too, where journalists want to protect their identity from government surveillance. In a lot of cases, people actually use VPNs while using unsecured mo mobile Wi-Fi hotspots since packet sniffers and other inspection techniques can root out your information. Now, a lot of people actually hate VPNs, they think they're over marketed, and they think that VPNs aren't really kind of like that good of a security and anonymity tool. But usually these people focus on the aspect that a VPN does not provide an end all answer to security and privacy and anonymity. And in some ways this is true, but I also think it's a gross overstatement. VPNs on their own, of course, aren't enough, and you do need more tools to be anonymous and in private as you can be. Now, what VPNs do is increase and, and help your privacy, anonymity, and security. But at the end of the day, they are just one tool in the toolbox. So let's go ahead and talk about some other tools that you could use in conjunction with VPN providers, which can overall give you a very good level of privacy, security, and anonymity. The first thing I would recommend for you to use would be the Brave Browser. The Brave Browser is a privacy-focused browser with, that comes with great default configurations to protect your browser from serving you ads, and it also stops a good amount of tracking. Not only that, but you could use things like the Tor network within Brave by starting a new private window with Tor. Tor is a decentralized network that uses a series of nodes to anonymize your connection and IP, and it's a great anonymity tool that you can use. It's completely free, and you can use it even as a standalone browser, and some people think that it provides more anonymity than VPNs, since you don't put your data and trust in the hands of one company. However, Tor has its own kind of negative things about it, like the fact that it's much lower than VPN and you can't really use it for unblocking geo restrictions or just as a general tool on your computer's internet connection, Tor is just a browser. And lots of websites I've learned will flag you or even suspend your accounts for strange activity. They can kind of detect that you're on the Tor network, it seems like, or detect something weird going on at least. I think using Brave plus a VPN provider is a more realistic case and a good kind of scenario for people to use every day, day to day, um, that gives you the good blend of security, privacy, speed, and usability. Alongside Brave, I also recommend a good password manager. My two favorite options are LastPass and Bitwarden. LastPass, I think, is the more user-friendly of the two and it's been around longer and it's more popular and it does have very small restrictions on it. The free model is pretty much usable for everything you need, and I really do like LastPass. 
Now, Bitwarden is also a very solid option. It's perhaps more of a cult favorite among like the more niche privacy and security fans out there. It's um, open source. It allows you to self-host your passwords on your own server. And it even has a similar payment scheme to LastPass where you don't really actually have to pay that much to use it. I would personally use both of these options and see which one you like better because I think both are very solid. The last thing I would recommend for you to use alongside VPN would be a good anti-malware kind of security platform. Now I personally recommend Malwarebytes Premium. It's a great program to install and forget about. It will run scans so you don't have anything sketchy on your computer and it will prevent you from downloading or installing or even visiting websites that have malware on them. Plus, if you're on Windows, you can also use Windows Defender in conjunction with Malwarebytes without any compatibility problems. Now, finally, I do want to discuss something. Do you really need a VPN or not? Well, if you don't torrent content, if you don't have any problems with geo-restrictions, or don't want to watch extra content through streaming or bypassing sports blacklists, and if you don't care about your general kind of internet privacy slash anonymity, then perhaps consider saving a few bucks and skipping out on it. But I would be lying if I said I don't think everyone should use a VPN. Everyone should care about their privacy, at least. VPNs do help you stay more private from an invasive internet service providers, tracking pretty much everything that you do. They're a great tool that you should take advantage of, I think. Most of the other services that will provide you with more anonymity and security and privacy you could usually get for free um, stuff like password managers like i mentioned tor you could get for free as well antivirus you could use the free version of malwarebytes to just scan although i do recommend the pro version for real-time protection but vpns unfortunately aren't really a tool that you could skimp out on you don't really want to be using what is called a free vpn provider so if you're tied on cash and you have to choose for paying for antivirus a premium plan for antivirus or a premium plan for vpn at the end of the day, I would recommend paying for the premium VPN since hands down, like I said, I wouldn't recommend using a VPN provider for free, whereas other services, sometimes it's okay to do so. That's because most free VPN providers make money from selling your data, giving you ads, or just kind of trying to upsell you to some product you don't need for one reason or another. So if you have a few bucks to spare, consider using a VPN because it's not really that expensive at the end of the day. We've covered some of the basics of why you might need a VPN, as well as some of the other tools you can use to make sure you're more private and anonymous to pair with a VPN. In the next section, we're going to discuss how to choose a VPN and what you will need to consider. Anyways guys, see you in part 3 of the VPN Noob to VPN Master Series.